Richard brought me this question. Um, can you talk about memory training in relation to the Boston School approach to painting? I've read Le Coq de Beaubaudoin, a little book, several times, and Degas seems to place a great deal of importance on it, according to Mr. Gamble in his book, The Shop Talk of Edgar Degas. Does a trained memory play a role in Impressionist painting, which seems totally based on an accurate interpretation of the field of vision one is observing at the moment one is painting? It seems a bit more necessary in landscape painting, but what about studio work? And do you have any suggestions to an approach for memory work? That gets all the points in, doesn't it? <laughs> good, good job, Richard. <laughs> uh, don't, keep, don't make it a simple question, right? Whatever you do, right? No, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm very pleased whenever that happens, because, but I don't want to still go a half hour. Uh, no, studying with Gamble um, was the first time I'd ever heard of, uh, of training in memory, and, and Gamble um, put before us the Lecoq book. And what's interesting about Lecoq, uh, that's L-E-C-O-Q, uh, was that he had worked with people like Alphonse Le Gros and Whistler and Degas, I believe Whistler and Degas, and had all sorts of other influences. And some of the evidence of the work that they did is in his book, in one of the books, um, some of the uh, kinds of things that they did. Um, that, and the range of it was everything from, uh, from uh, uh, memorizing individual items, figures, whatever, to memorizing paintings, memorizing uh, in a museum and going home and trying to put down what you had seen. And of course, in the case of Whistler, the um, and I've done this myself, you know, very successfully. I wish I had the painting, the, the drawings to show you. Maybe I should. I will actually. I'll put. I have them online, so I can put them on the screen for you to look at, or I can show you what I've done with memory studies of of uh, evening light where you can't sit out there because it's too dark already or because I, in my case, driving in a car down a highway. And so I was able to memorize three and four different notes uh, and uh, put them in a, and, and retain them uh, for work in the morning to put them down in pastel, uh, with pastels. Uh, and, um, you know, and I found it was very doable. Uh, but so he had done all those things. Lecoq had done all that teaching. Um, Degas believed that impression, I mean, sorry, the memory was so important. In fact, he, his indication of it is that he talks, besides other conversation, he talks about creating a studio, teaching studio, where the, where the uh, this model would be on the first floor and the fifth floor would have um, the uh, more advanced students. Well, I mean, it obviously suggests an extremely well-trained memory uh, if you're working on the fifth floor. Which is one of those things that gets right to this point, though, about Impressionism, because and, and the point that uh, Richard makes is the uh, Impressionist is all about the relationships of things. So um, you can remember the relationships. If you get two and three things before you, it's easy somehow to retain that. Uh, when I look out at one of these evening landscapes, I've memorized headlights behind me, driving in a car behind me, and rem rem memorized the color scheme of that, of, of, of that. I'll try to show you that. I think I have that one in a way that I could show you, too. And uh, how, how long can you stare in the mirror without crashing your car, right? So, um, but, but it requires you to see them as a set, actually to see two and three things and assess something about them and in such a way that it actually makes it memorable visually. By the way, one of the things you learn to do uh, uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as an Impressionist is you learn to to stay, keep your thinking all, all out in front of you. You don't think with your head things you know. You don't think about perspective and you don't think about anatomy. You don't think about structure, you don't think about anything. You just look. And, when, and that's the beauty of this whole thing is that it's, it's, it's a, it really does simplify the problems in a way that makes you much more effective, much more powerful. But you're, you, 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 uh, in your looking, uh, 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 we'll see things as sets. If you look big, like we've been talking about in the other videos, if you take in more than one thing or see the thing as a set, you can easily let your brain assess it as it looks. Let your brain say things like red, yellow, blue, and things like that. And note chroma, note sizes of things before your eyes, as opposed to having to think about, that's a cloud, clouds do this, clouds do that, you know. Uh, which world is far too complicated for you. Uh, in that moment, it's too much to think about, too much in fact, it's too much of the wrong kind of thinking. 
I could throw at you the uh, the aphorism of the of of a, of a time you have to be uh, brought to us by Gamble, and I would suggest to you it's a purely an impressionist thing, but that you have to be out of your mind to be a painter. <laughs> and uh, what parent doesn't know that, right? Um, with an amb with a kid wanting to be a painter, but. Um, of course, on the other hand, you have Millet quoting Rembrandt saying, when I stop thinking, I stop painting, which is fascinating as from one painting, painter talking about another one. Um, but um, let me get back to a couple points. Um, so, so at one point, there's a bit of an anecdote here. At one point, uh, um, I was looking, Gamble bought us in, among the many amazing things he did, and they in creating a, a, an educational environment for us, he bought us tickets to a to a um, private library where you could see these ancient volumes. I mean, I, I think I was the only person who checked out a book from 1798 ever, and now they were four volumes, and I took them away with me. You know, I mean, like, what public library <laughs> does that? You know, so that, that itself was a pretty funny story. But among the other stuff in that library was was an offering on memory drawing by Madame Cave. And Madame Cave was a teacher around the time of Ang who was teaching women when it was hard for women to get, to be able to study, at least in public places, as I understand it. And, um, and so, so for, for a woman to be able to get her, to, 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 to follow her dream that way, uh, you know, it became quite difficult. Madame Cave was doing some really seriously good service. Uh, and she described a way of, of uh, doing a figure from memory. And so she, she so and I can't recall whether they were drawing, copying something, you know, like a drawing, probably was something like a drawing or perhaps a lithograph or something like that, engraving. But she simply described uh, drawing a vertical line right down the t from the highest point to the lowest point of a, say, a standing figure, and then crossing it with a horizontal line. So it's like crosshairs. And these lines would, one, the long one would start at the top of the head and end at the foot. The side widening one would be start at some significant point, uh, say an arm sticking out would start at the elbow and go over to some significant point, maybe hitting a couple good things on the way through. <laughs> and, and you would then take those lines and you would memorize the shape uh, using that as, a, as an anchor. So then what you would do is you would draw, you would draw that on the drawing or on the etching and look at it that way. And then you would get a piece of paper out, draw the same exact crosshairs, and try to, to, to articulate the outline that you had just memorized, uh, attaching those points at the key places. And that was just a kind of a leg up, sort of a, you know, like training wheels or something like that. And uh, so I did that, all those things that Gamble recommended. The funny part of this, though, is, by the way, uh, Gamble ta taught that before I ever had seen the Madame Cave book. And when I saw the book, I thought, Gamble's going to really be, get a kick out of this. And I took the book... Um, of Madame Cave teaching memory drawing, I took it to Gamble and I said, look, he's, she's describing your method. And he went rather dark on me and he said, I didn't learn that from her. <laughs> you know, funny days, I mean, like, I guess he was part of, a, of another era <laughs> in more ways than one. But, um, but I thought that, you know, th those things are interesting. But yeah, the, the, key, the key to Impressionist work though is, is the relationships of things, which can be memorized. <laughs> I can't memorize a thing. I don't, there's no capacity, and in fact, it's not useful. What you need to memorize is color, color relations. And one of the things we do, and a lot of people have a lot of resistance to it when they study with me at the beginning, we stand back and we paint walking toward the paint, so we stand back and look, and we take in the whole, and we, we, you learn again. This is like the fifth floor compared to what a lot of people do today. When you see people today, you see a lot of people doing the demonstrations. They're sitting there literally looking over at the model going like this and going like this, going like this. There's, in, in some sense, there's almost no need. There's virtually no need of a memory. There's not a use of, much use of a memory. You make a mark and see if it's okay, you know, that sort of thing. But, uh, that, but even Sargent talks about learning, learning, draw the longest line you can remember. You know, that's a memory-based idea. So when you're drawing, when, you, when you're a really good draftsman, that's what you're doing. You're actually articulating, even as shifting the edges and things of the line as you travel down, you know, the length of a silhouette along the edge of a, of a, um, of a reading form, of a reading silhouette, a really contour. So um, let me see. Let me make sure I'm answering his questions. I got to. I got to review this. I'm talking about this stuff, but um, yeah. So does it play a role? Yeah. Uh, and that's you know. And I, the one thing I would add to that that it plays a role in that relational thing is that it doesn't just 
it's not just for the purposes of getting an accurate thing. You're going to find that when you when you have to learn the set of the reds, when you have to actually look at this red to learn to hit this red note, you have to look at these other two and three and get them into your eye simultaneously. That all of a sudden you're going to see music, the music of the reds, which you will not have seen before if you haven't had to put them into that context. That you can then transfer up to the fifth floor, per to God, right? So I think that's almost the end of that. Even though you asked a lot of questions, I think I almost covered it. Um, I'll give you some suggestions about approaches. I, I, I may have some images I could sh project out there, and I'll try to, of work I've done. I, it's easy for me to say I did some pretty uh, good work, but if you struggled as long as I did, you know that um, you've done some pretty bad work. <laughs> and, uh, and to whatever good you did, it was just sheer hard labor. I mean, one of the things I found about memory work from a figure like the Madame Cave method where you would draw crosshairs on a figure and then just memorize the outline. Well, we got to the point, of course, where we're not just memorizing the outline, but memorizing, memorizing all the forms and modeling the thing from memory. And uh, I got to the point where I could do one probably in about three sittings was probably the, the, the fastest I could do it, three two-minute looks, something like that. And that's part of the surprises people, too, that it's not this elongated thing where you torture your brain. But I learned that what the only the thing you must do if you really want to be able to do this effectively is lock yourself like into a room, like turn yourself into a hermit and shut off all the sound and, and have no and have no dinner waiting or, or or something event coming up. Just get into this place where you can be totally isolated and become a, 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 a real, what shall we say, aficionado of awareness. I mean, just literally, you know, a, a, a student of awareness. And, uh, but put yourself in that place, in a quiet place, with strong light hitting the, hitting the image, you know, like coming over your shoulder, like this really strong light hitting the image. So it's memorable to your eyeball. Don't sit in a dark room, you know, where you can hardly see the thing. And keep it the distance, make it a small enough image, and keep it a distance from your eye where you can see the whole thing while you're looking at it, even while you're memorizing your way around it. And I do simply recommend that you think of it as like taking like little clips, take snapshots, just for starters, and that's one of the things that Richard might have been looking for, but take little clips, shots of the uh, image. A little curve goes like this. You can remember, you might be able to hold that in your eye for a second. And, if you, and, try, and so I, I find that what I do is I look at a, a section like that that I find sort of interesting, and I just close my eye for a second. And, and that moment of retaining it is enough if you've actually been there, right? Interesting part, there's so many things to learn about this, but uh, one of the books out there on... Um, uh, oh, I forget what the field is that's covering this, but um, it's one of the books that leads up to all these thoughts about mastery. Uh, all the different books are out now, about three or four different books. This is the guy who did all the basic research. He talks about teaching a student uh, to memorize indefinite numbers, rows of numbers, lists of numbers. Like people have historically been known to memorize the, uh, uh, um, what's it called? The, the radius, the, um, oh, gee, I've lost the word for that. Right. Yeah, the, the number, 1.141, 1. 1, all the way out to the nth degree. I mean, they just memorized like 400 of them or some number. And, uh, and this guy was showing you how he took one guy and learned, to, you know, and, and that guy was able to get out to like 84 numbers. And then the next guy was able to get way more, like to 400 numbers. But, but there's a, but it's like anything else, you know, there are best ways. And you find, you find certain ways of thinking about things like grouping and things like that. And so there's so many different reasons to use memory. And I didn't even know after I'd done it with Gamble and done it really effectively and to the point where it almost scared me. <laughs> I have to admit that, you know, it's just like, Ooh, is this okay, you know? I mean, no, but, it, you know, it's very strange. I don't know why there's sort of a glass ceiling thing about it or something. Uh, but I, I said to myself, you know, I don't even know what this is doing for me. But over time, it's done enormous things for me. And the use of the memory is so, is so always there for you, you know, as you're doing that long line that Ang talks about, or the sergeant talks about, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I should say more about that. Um, studio work, you know, I, it's this, you can see that I would, the question is, is it also work in studio work, you know? Of course it is, it's, there's no difference in fact the way a, a, an honest impression, it's as a pure impression, it's as a, a person who's an impressionist all the time. Uh, the way it works is indoors the same as outdoors, so why wouldn't it be the same? You know, it is, yeah. But yeah, the seeing, the seeing relationally and, um, and being a relational person gives you context, and context is a key to memory.
period. That's what I found. And uh, so good luck with all your efforts in that way, but it's not a field that you shouldn't pursue. And Gamble actually said once to us, he said, he said, I think I might have been a pretty good draftsman if I just learned memory drawing earlier in my career. And he, I think he implied that he may have picked it up way into his 40s somewhere. But uh, I'm not a fan of that way of thinking about developing. I think if you can, you, if you can acquire it anytime. And, and, and as I said, you know, the one thing I didn't say is you, you need, if you do this, you need to not pick it up and put it down and pick it up. You can't do that. You have to sit on this thing as a job and do it every day for like three months if you actually want to see results. And uh, don't even think twice about it. Just do it every time, like taking out the trash. I mean, just do it every day at the same time and make sure the circumstances are right, the light is good, and all the rest of that stuff. But, um, yeah, that's my best shot at that question. Thanks very much, Richard, and I wish you all well uh, making these efforts. It applies to every kind of drawing, by the way, and every kind of painting. It doesn't just apply to Impressionism. I didn't mean to say that it did. I think Impressionism makes it easier. Impressionist thinking, the Impressionist mindset, makes it more logical and more, you know, likely to be, um, or more likely to benefit you fast. Even that's probably not even quite true. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and <clears throat> comment, share, um, and like. Yeah, like was the other one I couldn't remember last week. And see you soon.